I'm running laps around the room today. Cause I gotta get all of this energy out. I don't know where it's coming from, but it's coming from fast now. Oh man, Uncle Ray's heart. Yeah, we we heard about that before, didn't we? So welcome back to Investigations 2, dudes and dudettes. What are we doing today? Where was the body hidden? In the trunk. I mean, I guess, but they were gonna have to go back for it anyway. Oh, why couldn't they just take? Well, they can just take it with them. Whatever they were playing. Well, they probably had to wait for the auction to clear out, and then. Okay, well, let's just see. And then they just dumped it down there or something. The reason why we found a blood stain in the costume trunk is because the murderer hid the body in that box. It almost seems too simple, Mr. Edgeworth, doesn't it? I wonder who won the bid for it. The trunk, I mean. More like who won the bid for the body. That's what I'm starting to wonder. That I don't know. In a certain way, everything worked out exactly as someone wanted. Hold it, hold it! It couldn't have been in that dressing box! What do you mean? When I first came down here, that box caught my eye, too. It was just the right size and would have made the perfect hiding place. That's what I thought, anyway. But you tried to hide in there yourself. Oh, no. You're not gonna make that reference? Okay. It'd be wrapped up real tight with a locked chain. The murder happened after that. The murderer, not the murderer. So hiding the body in there would have been impossible, you know? A chain wrapped around it. That's a bit strange. Right now, it doesn't seem to be locked up at all. Hmm. Well, that's weird. Maybe my eyes were playing tricks on me or something. I mean... <laughs> Somebody just came in here with, like, a pair of whatever you call those super strong scissors. I don't know, dude. And with that, I believe we have examined everything there is to examine here. Well, then, let's head on down. Oh, we decided on our next destination. Okay. Yes, Mr. Shields? We wouldn't want you to get lost, so make sure you stay real close to Uncle Ray, okay? <laughs> right, I'll follow you closely, Mr. Shields. These two. Since when did they get along like that? Man, I, oh my god, we're all going together. Oh my god, it's crowded in here. There's no way you can fit 48 Edgeworths on that thing. Oh god! That's right where the blood stain is! Tell me the body didn't get. Well, no, that couldn't have happened because we have a body. But my first. Like, I saw the elevator and I thought about the bloodstain, and the first thing I thought of was a body getting crushed under the lift. I don't know, maybe there's two bodies. It's getting late. Man! Two guys coming and walking from the side. One's got his thumb up his butt, the other's got his butt up his thumb. It's Mr. Edgeworth! <laughs> I'm back. At this time, I mean business. Who took my badge? I left it right there on this pulpit, or whatever you call that thing. Is this the auction hall? Oh, yes, it is. No, it's the meeting room from before. Ha 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 ha! How nice of you to drop in, Kai Faraday. What? You got some guts. Hey, you guys, arrest her, arrest her! Wait, Kay is... As for the rest of the riffraff, just show them out the door. We were just getting started here. There are so many people on the screen. Lot is taking pictures. I don't know what's going on anymore. This is tyranny! Yeah, it's tyranny, pal. By the way, hi, Emma. <laughs> Miles, this is kind of bad. The light of justice shines above me. <laughs> oh, 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 yes! 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 Why'd you whip gumshoe? Why me too? Oh, that's strange. I was aiming for that weak-ass prop here. I guess I got in the way. You were clearly aiming at me. Maybe something got in my way, particularly punks. Oh! <laughs> Every single time. Right around there. Francesca, you were so cool. Just what do you think you're doing here, ex prosecutor Miles Edgeworth? Uh, what happened to my. Why am I talking like Tim? I do not believe that Kay is the culprit behind this incident. Just an ordinary man without investigation rights. What do you say? It does not matter. I am Francisca von Kahn. I will never stop moving forward. 
However, you choose to quit. The outcome of your battle has already been decided. I cast away my badge for a reason. Because, because it became a millstone around my neck. That's pretty heavy. Not, uh, I guess it's heavier than the cravat, 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 cravat. I don't know anymore. I should have looked that up before we start. You know what, I'm gonna look it up right now, hang on. Okay, mostly what I'm getting here is cravat, so I guess we'll go with that. Hey, that rhymes. Uh, I shall continue moving forward, even without it. The path I walk will surely lead to the truth. My actions are driven by that belief, and that is something which will never change. So you are saying that you found a path to the truth, the truth, the truth, the truth. <laughs> then show it to me. But if that path proves to be a foolish one, it will not survive my whip. <laughs> Wait, we're arguing with you right now? But you're my friend, right? You're my little sister. Uh, this is this is basically the long and short of it. Okay, just imagine that you're born into something that your dad does, a career, basically. But then, he gives all the attention to this other guy. So your whole life is like this, you're trying to get good at what you're doing, you know, so you can prove yourself to him, then he goes up and dies. And next thing you know, the brother, who has everything that you wish you had, who got all the attention that you wish you had gotten, who'd come into all the success that you've been trying to, that you've been striving for, turns around and just throws his badge on the table and says, I don't want this anymore. It's like, I would have given anything to have what you have, and you just threw it away. That's why she's so mad. I mean, that's, I don't know, I'm kind of reaching and grasping a little bit with some of that, but that's kind of my interpretation of it anyway. So anyway, back to the point in here. The victim used her keycard and entered this room with the culprit. Then, the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with a candelabra, killing her. Shouldn't the letter make it obvious who the culprit is? Of course, the crime scene was right here in this room, the PIC meeting room. Now! Fight me if you will! The proof is in the bloodstain we found here in the meeting room that settles it, Miles Zedworth. You fool! This my Karma seems really confident, doesn't she? Oh, you have no idea. I see, she's a fiery one, isn't she? I don't mind a feisty cutie. So how about an introduction? <laughs> <laughs> how repulsive! <laughs> Well, Miles Edgeworth, where did you bring- where did you dig up that old fossil? Anyway. <clears throat> like, she's so desperate to just be on an even keel with me. You know, and that's never- that kind of thing never goes away. I'll show you, Francesca. The evidence that paves my path. Well, here goes nothing. So the victim used her keycard and entered this room with the culprit, yep. And the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with the candelabra. Shouldn't the letter- I don't know if I should be pressing this maybe, like some of this, because you, know, you always tend to miss dialogue if you don't. I'll, I'll try it. We are 100%ing this, I guess. Was there nothing suspicious about the security system? The meeting room security is perfect, much like my logic. There is no room for doubt. Your logic isn't as perfect as you think. <laughs> In any case, your opinion has not changed. Yes, the victim and the culprit entered the room together. Then, the culprit stabbed the victim in the chest with the- Wait, when did the thugs become Z suddenly? I don't know when that happened or how. Did the victim's wounds match up with the candelabra? Yeah, they did. Is there anything else that could have done such a thing? That should be all written in Dr. Young's autopsy report. Autopsy report? So you're sure that the murder weapon was the candelabra? Well, the way they're phrasing this makes me wonder. I mean... I mean, if somebody wanted us to think it was the candelabra, I don't know why that would even matter so much, but... Shouldn't they let her make it obvious to the compromise? Yeah, the letter, I'm telling you, man. Do you have anything to confirm that the letter was actually sent by Kay? Are you proposing that it was forged by the real criminal? That possibility was dismissed some time ago. There were no traces of forgery on the letter. Of course, there were no other traces besides Kay Faraday and the victim found on the letter. Are you saying you found Kay's fingerprints on the letter? The only fingerprints we found belonged to the victim. 
Ah. Uh, in other words, you can't really say that K is the culprit. Didn't I just say that the possibility of a forgery has been dismissed? That letter was originally sent by K. Fairy. Therefore, it is only natural to assume that she is the culprit. <laughs> you wish. You wish, you wish, you wish. So the crime scene is right here in this room. Well, see, that's the problem. We know it wasn't. Because we see blood on the lift. Did we get the blood on the lift? Yes, we did. Okay, but does that actually prove it didn't happen in this room, though? Well, the blood dripped to the floor. Oh, that's the blood st Oh, okay, let's just do it. Doesn't your testimony contradict with this piece of evidence? No! <laughs> At four the record, my answer is nine. Nine! Oh, I guess that was wrong. Okay, okay, okay. What are you doing, Miles? You're turning Franny Pie into Fifty Shades of Rage. Before that whip hits you, you should try and hurry up. Oh, God. Foolish words will only result in Fifty Shades of Pain! Ow. That was a rather cringing reading of that line, I'm sorry. I should settle this before Mr. Shields ends up as Fifty Shades of Maimed. <laughs> well, at least there wasn't like a statement after this, was there? Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me get back out of that. Proof is the blood stain. Oh, okay, 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 here we go. Blood stain we found here in the meeting room, that settles it. Okay, I got this. We're fine, I just had the wrong statement. Oops. Objection. It happens from time to time. Waggle waggle. If memory serves me correctly, this music is really cool. But let me just let it play out for a moment. Actually, I won't because we've already heard it a million times. The blood in the meeting room was found in front of the statue of Lady Justice, was it not? To murder someone before Lady Justice, this culprit knows no fear. Well, I agree there. I wonder about that. Have a look at this piece of evidence. Blood was found in the storeroom right above the meeting room. As you can see, there are signs that it has dripped down onto the floor below. And right under the hidden lift is... The Statue of Lady Justice. Oh, you got me again! God damn it! I'm never gonna be as good as you! I'm gonna throw my whip down and go to the airport again. The killer murdered the victim in the storeroom and then moved the body to this room. What Lady Justice witnessed was a coward trying to conceal their crime. And not the moment of the murder. Hmm. She's like, what? She's smiling. Yup. That's what she does when she knows you ain't done or she ain't done. Pardon me, I just remembered a conversation I had similar to this one. It was about two years ago. <laughs> As I expected, Miles Edgeworth, such naivete couldn't be possibly be an act. Just how's Mr. Edgeworth naive? Yowch! Shut up right now! Have you forgotten? Or are you just playing the foolish fool? The amount of blood in the meeting room is clearly greater than in the storm. Oh, please just don't hit me again and ignore me. Ah! Such a large amount of blood could have simply dripped from the floor above. And even if it had, there should have been much more blood left behind in the storeroom. Yeah, I kind of agree. The murder could not have occurred anywhere other than this meeting room. Hmm. You're as predictable as always, Francisca. Well, I'll take that as you talking to me, too. Because, uh, I was kind of with her there. The difference, is in the, the difference in the amount of blood is just as you say. The question is, why does such a difference exist? That issue is trivial. I've already explained it with my perfect logic. Wait a minute, here is um, the hell and logic that was on. Uh, in that case, how do you explain the blood that was found in the storm? I suppose you're going to tell me that it is somehow sprayed all the way up there. <laughs> like a what, Fountain? No way! <laughs> exactly. It's impossible. In other words, the reason for the difference in the amount of blood is... The amount of blood in the meeting room and the store are different because... Oh, the weapon's pulled out here. That would be... that would be a thing. Because we've been through this before. The victim died of a stab wound. Naturally, there would be a significant amount of blood loss. That's all these just from looking at the blood stain. But that's so weird. She was attacked in the storeroom, but there was less blood found there than ah. 
Shut up, I'm talking right now. Silence, you third-rate prosecutor. But I'm the best! <laughs> Not anymore. Wow. Do you know when you lose the most blood after getting stabbed with a sharp object? Uh, I know. It's when the sharp object is pulled out, right? <laughs> it's funny you should bring up the subject of pulling out. Precisely. After being stabbed with a candelabra, the body was moved to the meeting room. And then, the murder weapon was pulled out right here in this very room. That would account for the difference in the amount of blood that was left behind. But why would the culprit go through all that trouble? Most likely to give the impression that the murder occurred in the meeting room. Yep. It seems Miss Crane's keycard was used last night. But based on the time of use, it must have been a ploy by the culprit to mislead us. In all likelihood, it was the culprit who used the keycard to enter the meeting room. Mm. Why would the culprit have needed to do that? Perhaps they fear that the storeroom would be found out during the investigation. If they were involved in the auction, they would not have wanted it to become public. Ooh, okay. Meeting room blood data. The auction, you say? Alright, let me look at something here. I haven't actually looked over most of this, but, uh... The pool of blood found in the meeting room wasn't left behind to hide the storeroom's existence. Maybe. Killer hid the victim in this box, blood stains found inside. This one's found on the hidden lift, only since we drew to the downside floor below. A lot of his testimony was about the, uh, just that stuff. Yeah. The auction, you say? Perhaps you should go upstairs and see for yourself what items are on display up there. Maybe it'll jog a few memories for you. I'm sure that will allow you to understand what occurred here. Impressive, Miles Edgeworth. You're willing to go that far to protect her. There's something big lurking behind the scenes of this case, if you know what I mean. <laughs> I'm sorry. Kay simply got caught up in it. <clears throat> You're exaggerating. Am I now? More than anyone, I would think you'd understand the significance behind all this. Why would you, a prosecutor working with Interpol, be involved in a domestic case? Wasn't your objective to crush a certain international smuggling ring? If your search for smuggled goods has led you here, then guess what, baby? I just found your target. I'm relieved. You haven't lost your touch, even though you've turned in your badge. I heard about your situation. From Scuffy over there. Uh-huh. We talked a little bit, yeah. Sorry, sir. I just wanted to help out somehow. A wise decision, detective. What? <coughs> Francisca, are you the one in charge of this case? Isn't Interpol pursuing the black market auction? And what if I am? That's not something you need to know. So, you knew about all this from the very beginning. You knew the black market auction was being held... ...right here. That's a lot of pressure. Hey, hey, mind if I butt in? No, I guess not. Not that gal that turned up dead. <laughs> She's like, I don't want to hear from you. Hey, I ain't done talking yet. Oh, she recognizes her. Because she was part of the case, the case 2-2. Mmm. This case doesn't need a fragment of your faulty testimony. <laughs> what are you saying? Can't you make up your mind what octave to speak in? I'm a bone. Oh, yeah, you're, you're a bone. That's what you are. Back then, you gave false testimony. Miss Von Karma seems to really dislike Lana. <laughs> I can't say she's fond of her. Ain't that crane gal one of them PIC members? She's a spitting image of the conductor. I reckon she's... Yowch. She hit me. She hit me again. What is the meaning of these? Answer me, Miles Edgeworth. From Miss Hart's testimony, we obtained a description of what the conductor was wearing. And it matches what the victim, Jill Crane, was wearing. You mean to say, the one who was murdered was the conductor? Yep. Is that bad? You wanted to get information from her, right? Or something. Well, I mean, you want to get information from anybody who was involved. It would seem that a new factor of the system brought to light. Indeed, I came here in pursuit of the black market auction in order to arrest the organizer of the event. In other words, the conductor. If we believe Miss Hart's testimony, and the conductor is already dead. Your job is done. You can go home now. 
Well, I mean, if they were searching for her, maybe they wanted her dead anyway. I swear on my name, I will not return empty handed. Okay, you can take the body with you then. I challenge you, Miles Edgeworth. <laughs> A challenge is fine, but what are we gonna talk about? Does you want to just play Monopoly or something? Oh, we're going at it again here. Holy crap. Twice. <laughs> Sorry, I must be tired. I will concede your argument. The murder occurred in the storeroom, correct? That would mean the culprit is someone who participated in the auction. If that photographer is correct, the victim was the conductor, and the culprit was a customer. The culprit waited for the victim in the storeroom, where the goods were delivered. Then they stabbed the victim in the chest with the candelabra in the storeroom. Okay, well, um... That is all. I trust you had no objections. Unfortunately, that is not the case, because there is a hole in your testimony. There is, actually. As expected, Mr. Edgeworth, I didn't notice anything at all. Well, you suck then! Or, I wish you would. I'm sorry! No, I'm... Just go, just go. Let's just do this. Alright. Francis Good's Logic, Part 2. See your argument, the murder occurred in the storeroom. Yep. That would mean the culprit is someone who participated in the auction. Nope. Actually, I'm not sure. It could be that one, or it could be... Culprit waited for the... I think it's this one, because he wasn't waiting in the storeroom. He won an auction, and they both went up. At least that's what Lotta said, right? Well, she's gonna hate this. She's gonna hate that I'm using Lotta's testimony to prove her wrong, but... But Lotta said, the black market was supposed to be held there. It's a lot of people tend to bet each other the The auction continued even after... Oh, doesn't say anything here about that, though. Here, hang on. What if I just press? Miss Hart was in the storeroom at the time. Could the culprit really have been waiting there? That, too. Ooh, nice objection. I don't know why she was hiding, but since you've seen it, you must know as well. There are numerous hiding places in that storeroom. But how would you know? You would never even been in there. So the culprit was hiding while they waited for the victim to arrive. I believe the crime occurred after the auction ended. Ah, uh, there you go. That's what I wanted. Thank you so much. <laughs> mm-hmm. After the auction ended, huh? Please add that statement to your testimony. Believe the crime occurred after the auction ended. Okay, this is what we want. But she did say the auction kept going. She did say that. Let me double check it. The auction continued. Yep. Bam. Objection. Gotcha! <laughs> Shrug. No problem. As I thought, you were one step behind. I mean, she can't help it, you know? She didn't hear all this testimony. She didn't get a chance to look at the room. It's not like it's her fault. <laughs> the victim was not the conductor. And I have proof. Okay, now this ma Okay, I was wondering about this before. I was like, well, they couldn't continue on without her, right? So maybe someone else just came up and took over. But no. What are y'all saying? I'm a bona fide jur- OW! <laughs> Cease your idle chatter. Man, two times in a row- Oh my god, dude! <laughs> Friends, let's calm down and listen. Calm your tits. This heart witnessed a part of the murder. The main point here is that after witnessing the murder, she says the auction continued. That's right. Sure as can be, they all just kept going on shamelessly. Do you think the auction could have continued without someone conducting it? If the victim was not the conductor, the person killed must have been a customer. Uh-oh. Oh, did you lose your bra, honey? <laughs> I'm sorry. Stealing Lucajin's jokes over here. As I said from the beginning, Kay is not the culprit. After all, she herself was attacked by someone in lost consciousness. In which case, that would also make her a victim. If the auction continued after the incident, it could. Yes, and the victim was not the conductor, but a customer. It makes you wonder. Alright, there she is. Um, that's enough. Cue the Castlevania music. Order in the court. The chairman will now enter. We're not doing this right now. Where's the other ten people? My, my. No need to be so stiff. What? Excuse me? How can I not be stiff? Have you seen who's in here? 
Actually, feel free to call me Blazy. Blazy? <laughs> if you want to learn to swim, you gotta jump in the water! Well then, Blazy. I, I mean, uh... Well then, Blazy, what brings you here? So, huh? Oh well, no, I just wanted to see if my idiot son was working hard as all. What is going on with this guy? Seriously. Uh-oh. I'm pulling out the lighter, pulling out the zippo again. I had come to light a fire under your ass, but it seems I found an unexpected bonus. A dingleberry. To think that the criminal who has become the talk of the town would be here of all places. He's here, all right. All right, everyone restrain the suspect at once. Please wait, k is not the cult. <gasps> Whoa, oh shit. That's a hell of a lighter. This is quite troubling, Edgeworth. Didn't I tell you earlier? The PIC desires a swift resolution to this case. Listen to this music for a second. This is scary as hell. <laughs> yeah, well. Yes, yes, that's right. You're so reliable, Courtney. I'm aware of the consequences of my actions, and I'm sorry! You may punish me as you wish, however... Uh, we have found a new suspect. It's the person pictured here. K. Faraday was attacked by this person, and... Overruled! Overruled, yeah, you know it. There's no need for your explanation. Just recently, a red raincoat was discovered in the vicinity of this building. The victim's blood and cherry blossom petals were found on the hood. Wait a minute. Oh no. Yes, they probably stuck on due to the blood. They were littered around the bloodstain. And we've received a forensic report on the blood, you know. There's no doubt about it. The person- I feel like I've given this voice to somebody else, maybe even not that long ago. The person in that photo is the victim, Jill Crane. What? What? Seriously, what the... Crap. Impossible, that would completely destroy the foundations of our logic. We had believed the person in the red raincoat was the culprit. And now it turns out that person is actually the murder victim. Wait, if that's the case, then the prime suspect would be... Miss Faraday, you met a person in a red raincoat on the rooftop, did you not? Yes, I did, but... The person in the red raincoat was the murder victim. And K. Faraday came into contact with that person. Since one of the parties is now dead, what happened next should be clear. Objection! Shoot! K was attacked by that person. As the victim, it would be impossible for her to be the culprit. There is no evidence she was attacked, is there? Furthermore, we must consider the possibility that the victim fought back. It's far too early to come to that conclusion. Kay's not the criminal. Damn it. What? No, you're wrong. Everybody's wrong. Everybody. Everybody in this room. Even Emma. You're all wrong. Oh, no. Oh, boy. The culprit. The toilet. There's no time to joke about that. It is not! Hang on. No, she probably got stabbed. And then tried to get away. Okay, the picture of the person in the red raincoat had blood on their left hand, right? Maybe she got that from clutching her chest after being stabbed. She was trying to get away. She went up the ladder, collapsed there. I don't know, dude. That 
can't be right. Then why? Why do I have that memory? That person collapsed before my eyes! Engulfed in a pool of blood! Why didn't I do anything? It must have been... because I killed her. No, no, no. Oh, God. It is clear to me, the validity of Kay Faraday's memory. Didn't you doubt it until just now, pal? Yeah, really. You only accept her memory when it coincides with your side of the facts, right? Congratulations, Miss Faraday. Your courage will surely allow you to be forgiven. Yeah, but it's not gonna stop you from putting her in the chair, is it? Oh, man, I ain't rejoicing to no blessings. I'll, I'll put some salt on the ground and... Anyway. Allow me to give my opinion as an international prosecutor. Her actions as a criminal are... What? Even her? Oh, man, she's not even... I know, poor Francisca. Dang it, I, I'm sorry. I just, oh man, you're being too forceful. Further verification is necessary. I'd even go so far as to say this is unlawful. Unfortunately, the law does not side with you. Well, who said that? Who decided that? It sides with me. You see, <laughs> so happy. But you know, the beautiful bond between you two has been etched deeply into my heart. That reminds me, we seem to have forgotten one additional suspect. What? Edgeworth, that's you. It's your time. This is you right here. And this is your brain on drugs. Well, that pal, Mr. Edgeworth hasn't done nothing wrong. I beg to differ. That's right, you see? He's no longer a prosecutor, sadly enough. Your actions have gone too far this time. <laughs> An illegal investigation and assisting in the escape of a criminal? I cannot even think of you as a former prosecutor. Now humbly accept your punishment, you dirty, dirty man. Oh yes, that's right. I believe the plan for today was to hold your hearing before the PIC. Well, we can skip all that bullshit now. You're out. Why don't we leave the hearing for tomorrow? Even though the result is already crystal clear. You should think long and hard about what you've done. Very long and very hard. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Cult is now adjourned. Hammer. Whippica. Today was a bad day. Maybe tomorrow will be better. See you guys next time.